Hello and welcome back to the Big Ideas Art Studio. My name is Nicole and in this video I want to answer another common question that comes up when people are thinking about transitioning to a choice-based art education. So the question is, what do you do on day one? How do you start the year offering choice to your students? And the reason that is a question is because we are told that in order to maintain manageability of your studio or your centers, that you should open one center at a time so that students can get used to that one center and really understand the ins and outs and how each one works. So if that's the case, then what happens on day one when you leave one option for your students? So before we talk about how to start the year specifically, I want to talk a little bit about the overall theme of your first few weeks. So the first few weeks in your art studio are really going to be about establishing your procedures and making sure each of your kiddos knows exactly how the art room is supposed to run. And also it's about establishing a safe environment for authentic art making. So if you've seen previous videos, we've talked a little bit about how Making art authentically can make a student feel vulnerable. So it's really imperative that at the beginning of the year, you, you work on creating a safe space for your students. So with that being said, it's really, really important to teach procedures at the beginning of the year. So before you even start planning for the year, I recommend taking time to think through each one of your procedures. So how are your students going to enter the class? How are they going to leave the classroom? Where will you meet for your demonstration of the day? Think through each one of those things and write them down so that you have a really good idea of the things that you're going to be teaching the first few weeks of art. So the other thing I want to mention is that you don't have to have your whole year planned out to start offering choice to your students. Just focus on those first few weeks and the rest will fill in from there. The really great thing about offering choice and embracing the teaching for artistic behavior philosophy is that your curriculum becomes emergent. So you use the data that you're seeing in your class, your observations, the things that you notice that your kids need, that those weaknesses are going to provide information to you and you're going to use those weaknesses to build your curriculum. So if you notice that your students are weak in a particular area, that's how you're going to plan your next lesson. So don't worry about planning the whole year at once. So on day one, think about teaching two groups of students, no matter how many groups or how many grade levels you have. So I think about my rookies, so the, the kiddos who are coming into the art studio the first for the first time and what they need to know. And then I think about my veterans, my studio veterans who have been there before and who probably already know a lot of the procedures and routines. So on day one for my rookies, I greet them at the door and I assign them their art numbers. So I've talked in the past about using art numbers. So each kiddo has an art number and then those art numbers are used for various things in the art room from seating to choosing a center. So once they know their art number, they then find their respective art number on the floor, which is in front of our communal, which is our communal meeting spot, right? Right in front of the projector. And I use a document camera to um, demonstrate the skill for the day. So they're going to use their art number, find their spot on the floor, and then I instruct them to have a seat. From there, I go over my expectations for demo time, right? So I, I call it the Mona, and so I want all of my students to be quietly listening and paying attention, hands are folded in their lap during demonstration time. So once we go over the MoMA, then we practice entering the art room, finding our number, showing the MoMA. We do that a couple of times, maybe more if a class needs the practice, but I try not to draw it out too long. The other thing that I like to do when teaching procedures is I like to use a noise mach machine, and this is a Cassie Stevens tip. Um, I read about it several years ago, a little red noise machine, and I'll provide a link in the description to that, but I like to use it to make like a round of applause or drum roll sound effects just to make things interesting. So once I think that my students have a pretty good understanding of how to enter the classroom and meet in their uh, designated area, I then open the drawing center. So I have only one center open on day one and that is the drawing center. But in order to provide choice, I break the drawing center down into five mini centers and we call it drawing around the room. So there are five options within that one center for them to choose from. So my five options are observational drawing. I have a mini still life set up at one table. 
I have free draw because I know that there are just going to be some kids, in fact there's a lot of kids who just want to draw what they're interested in. So I have a free draw table, I have a material exploration table where I set up different drawing tools for the kids to explore. I also have a table with stencils set up. I do include stencils in my in my art room. I find them very helpful for helping those reluctant kiddos jump into, into drawing, into the art making process. So I have a stencil table set up where they can experiment with those. And then I also have a table with drawing books and also the drawing binder that I keep at my resource center. So the binder has examples of drawings that other kiddos have done. So they can choose which table to work at and then they have their remaining 15, maybe, maybe 20 minutes um, to work um, at their desired center. From there, the next procedure that we focus on is the cleanup procedure. So although the centers or the drawing center is spread out throughout the room, it's still a great time and it's great to start early of getting them in the habit of putting things back where they go. So when it is time to clean up, I talk about the cleanup map and I show them how to go through the process of up and that starts with your artwork, where does your art need to go, then the table is the next stop on the cleanup map, what needs to be put away, does your table need wiped down. Next is the floor, uh, making sure that there's nothing left on the floor. Finally we have something I call extras, um, so do you need to wash your hands, do you need to get a bag to take your materials home in, um, that kind of thing. And then finally at the end of the map is the Mona. So I expect them to meet me back on the floor on their number ready to share. So teaching your cleanup procedures on day one is very, very important. Cleanup is a huge part of working in a studio, so it's important that from day one you're getting them into that habit and that routine of cleaning up. So following cleanup, I have the students meet me back on their art number in the communal area and we talk about share. So we don't share on the first day, but we do go over what sharing is and some of the norms and the expectations for sharing. So we put some of those expectations into practice by having a discussion on the first day. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, creating an, a safe atmosphere for your students is really imperative for moving forward. So I like to do that on day one by having the students talk about what makes art good, right? And it almost it always inevitably comes up that someone believes that good art equals realism. So that's something I like to address on day one. There are all different types of art and that art doesn't have to look realistic to be good art. So following our discussion, we talk about how we leave the art classroom. So I also have art numbers in a row next to the door where the kiddos can line up for departure. So they have an art number on the floor in our communal area, but they also have an art number in our lineup area. So we spend a couple of minutes finding our number and practicing lining up and getting ready for our teacher and getting ready to enter the hallway quietly. So for your veteran students, the kiddos who have been in your studio before, the typical outline of your first class will be similar, but also a little bit different. So you are going to review all of your procedures. So don't assume that they remember. Summer break is a long time, especially with this pandemic. It maybe has been a while since they've been in your classroom. So don't assume that they remember. So review all procedures in a similar way that you did with your rookies. Maybe you don't spend as much time making them practice, but you do want to make sure to review all of your procedures. So the other thing that I recommend looking different for your veteran students than your rookie students is work time. So I do recommend giving your uh, veteran students a few more options. So I always make sure to include a 3D option for my veteran students and um, other low maintenance centers, op center options. Something like collage or paper sculpture would be a great place to start. So from there, the following week, you continue to review the procedures you've taught, perhaps introduce some new procedures like how do I check out to go to the bathroom, uh, how do I use the sink if necessary, those kinds of things, but then also you're going to start introducing some skills and talking more about how to generate ideas, right? How do artists come up with ideas? In the following weeks, you're going to continue to open centers, manageable centers, easy centers, just until everything is established in your art room and the kids are running it efficiently, working independently, and you know that they are ready for messier centers like painting or play.
So in the description, I will include a link to my first four weeks in the art room and what that looks like in my classroom so that you can get a better understanding of that first day and also the next couple of weeks following and how I open each center. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. Join me for my next video and also share this with anyone you think might benefit. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.